We're still waiting for the very last ballots to be counted, for the election results to be finalised. But uh, with more than 97% of the votes counted up, it, it looks very tight indeed between the number of seats uh, for the party of Benjamin Netanyahu and his closest rival, Benny Gantz, the leader of the Blue and White Party. Uh, some polls, exit polls, they're putting them neck on neck on 35 seats each. But, and this is crucial, in terms of who can form a government, it looks right now like there is a clear path for Benjamin Netanyahu to go on and form a coalition and therefore uh, have a fifth term as Israeli Prime Minister, making him the longest serving Prime Minister in Israel's history, overtaking the record of David Ben-Gurion, Israel's founding Prime Minister. As things stand, with the number crunching and the parliamentary arithmetic in the Knesset, it doesn't seem as though Benny Gantz has the support from smaller parties needed to take him over the magic number of 60 seats in the Knesset. Now, Benny Gantz has spoken out, saying, telling his supporters things look bleak, but he's not giving up hope just yet. He's hoping that some shift in the very last tallies of votes could somehow produce an electoral miracle. Benjamin Netanyahu, though, has already hailed his victory, calling it a great victory. Now, Catherine, Netanyahu did make this last-minute campaign pledge appealing to right-wing voters, where he said if he was elected, he would annex part of the occupied West Bank. Uh, was it that gamble that might have paid off for him? Well, Benjamin Netanyahu made that announcement in the very final days before Israelis went to the poll, and it was widely viewed here as an electoral ploy, as a statement to try and galvanize right-wing nationalist, nationalist uh, religious support, and it appears that that could have paid off. Now, the question will be, in office, whether he is bound to carry out that pledge to extend Israeli sovereignty to all settlements in the occupied West Bank, which internationally, of course, would be very controversial. But uh, the politics of Israel under Netanyahu has shifted further to the right, and it looks set even in this government, to shift further to the right. Some of his supporters in his coalition, if he manages indeed to form one, uh, will be very hard right indeed, including um, a party widely viewed as extremist, even by pro-Jewish, pro-Israel lobby in the United States, uh, supporters of the late Rabbi Mir Kahan, who uh, says that all Palestinians should be supported, uh, um, sorry, uh, deported rather, from Israel and the Palestinian territories, even if they're Israeli citizens. So very hardline views indeed. Now, Benjamin Netanyahu might also be held to that promise by some of his far-right supporters because he's seeking to overcome the problem of his pending indictment on corruption charges. And in order to get an immunity law passed, they may be asking for a very high price indeed, including concessions on ultra-Orthodox men joining the Israeli military and, yes, on annexing those settlements in the West Bank.